Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to today's Teens Cornerstone Connection Lesson Number 12, titled, God is in Control. First off, we will have our mission reading all the way from Dominica, done by myself, Natasha. Second, we will have a special item by the Women of Valor. And on set today with us, we have Ashley Silas, Omeri Kibwage, Peter Lewis, Ariana Kima, and uh, Teacher Bismarck. Everything will be interpreted into sign language by Asenath, Bosibori. Thank you. Welcome and be blessed. Today's mission reading comes from Dominica and it's titled Praying to Go to School with our main character, Kia. Do you like going to school? Kia loved her school so much on the island of Dominica that she prayed and prayed to go to school after a terrible hurricane. Kia didn't always go to Albaneza at Seventh day Adventist Primary School. For first grade, she was homeschooled by mother, so she was overjoyed when she heard that she would be that she would enter in a real school. I'm going to a real school, she exclaimed. Kia woke up very early on the first day of classes. She could barely contain her excitement and she was grinning from ear to ear. Nothing changed after that. Every day she woke up excited to go to school. When summer came, she couldn't, she couldn't wait to return to school to start third grade in the fall. When, the, when she finished third grade, she couldn't wait to start fourth grade. She loved her school, but something happened bad Something bad happened just a few days before school opened for fourth grade. A huge hurricane roared over their tiny island. The fierce winds destroyed the streets. The fierce, wi the fierce winds damaged bridges. The fierce winds ruined buildings. They ripped through the roof right over Kia's school. Without a roof, water flooded the school and desks and chairs were ruined. The school wasn't safe for children and it couldn't open for classes. Making matters worse, no one knew when the school would be repaired. Kia was very sad. She prayed, Heavenly Father, you know all our problems and we need a new school. Please allow us to get a new school. She prayed every night. Her classmates also prayed. The school's teachers prayed. Six weeks passed. Kia grew tired of sitting at home. She couldn't go out because it wasn't safe. Workers were trying to repair the streets, bridges, and buildings run by the hurricane. It seemed like everyone on the island was stuck at home. Kia kept on praying, Heavenly Father, you know all our problems and we need a new school. Please allow us to get a new school. Then one afternoon, Father told Kia, you can go to school. The public school had agreed to allow the children from the Adventist school to meet in its classrooms in the afternoons. Kia was so happy. She would finally be able to leave the house. She would finally be able to see her friends again. She didn't wait to go to bed to sleep to thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, she prayed. On the first day at the board school, Kia's friends ran over to her and hugged her. It was so nice. The children studied in the public school for six months. Then the roof was finally repaired at the Adventist school, and they could move back. Kia was so happy. Today, Kia has a new prayer. Like her, many children want to study at Adventist school, but there isn't enough room for them all. She's praying for God to help the school move to a bigger building. She's praying, Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you will give us funds for a new school building. I thank you for everything that you gave to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Kia knows that God hears the prayers just like he did after the terrible hurricane. Her father, who is an architect, has designed a bigger school building. And part of the, this quarter's 13th Sabbath, Sabbath offering in it will help cover the cost of constructing in Dominica's capital, Rosio. Thank you for planning a generous offering next week. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you may be with us through this lesson and that you may guide us and may your Holy Spirit cover all of us. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Katika safari yetu duniani Tume itwa kuwa mwanga kwenye giza Kwa ujasiri tukiwa na imani Tuwe chombo chaku eneza uzima Tuwa onyeshe Alivyo tufili ya msalabani Na ufawe wake utangaze Dunia yote imjue Tuwa onyesha mbesha Pendo lake Alivyo tufili ya msalabani Na ufawe wake Tuna 
kwa mkono wa Yesu tuna ushindi na kwa nguvu zake tena tunaweza kuwa onyesha kendo lake alivyo tufili na msalabani na ufalme wake tangaze dunia yote imjue kuwa onyesha pendo lake alivyo tufili amsalabani na ufalme wake tangaze dunia yote Good evening, happy Sabbath, wherever you may be joining us from. We are delighted to have you uh, here with us today. Uh, my name is Bismarck Lumumba, and I shall be uh, the moderator for this session. Last week, we learned about a troubling dream, a troubling dream that Daniel had. But this week, ladies and gentlemen, this week we're going to be learning about God being in control perpetually. But before we get right into our lessons, perhaps, why don't we introduce our other panelists? Uh, we can start from my very right. Uh, Ashley, say hi and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Ashley, and I'll be um, talking about this lesson with you guys. Uh, my name is Umweri Kibwage. Karibu sana. Hi, my name is Peter Lewis. My name is Ariana. Wonderful. Well, let's get right into it. But before we do, let's say a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, O Lord God, we come before you at this time, O Lord God. We'd like to thank you so much uh, for the wonderful day that you've given us and the opportunity to study this lesson. Now, Father, as we do, bless the viewer, bless us also. Help us, O Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. All right. Well, we'll jump right into the lesson and uh, just want to introduce... Uh, it by going into the what do you think section, what do you think section, uh, before we start. Uh, and here we are talking about Daniel and his vision from God, about, you know, the things to come, the things in the last days, and what those things symbolize. I don't know, Omweri, uh, what would you think about uh, all of that? Yeah, about the, what the visions mean. Particularly, we are told about the 2,300 days. Huh? Um, uh, particularly, you know, and, and, and Jesus' is the role uh, in, 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 that, in that space. Um, particularly, you know, you have, you know, what does it mean to, to, to you that Jesus is the advocate, mediator, and intercessor before the Father? And what is your response to him uh, in that regard? Yeah. I'm forgiven of my sins because if it was a human between us, you can have doubts because, you know, humans are, are prone to sin. But then, you know, Jesus lived a righteous life. So we have a direct and holy connection to God. So it reassures me that he's the mediator between us. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, uh, from the lesson today, we are learning about God being in control, that ideally 
even when things perhaps might not be working out in our lives, that God is in control of all the circumstances that are there. And that was the same uh, uh, story that Daniel had, or rather that was the same message that was in Daniel's dream of God being in control, of God actually having the reins of this world, right? And perhaps maybe we can just jump into the story just for us to have a look at precisely what is going on. Um, Ariana, perhaps you can take us through that. Yes, so we'll read the into the story, then answer the questions in the out of the story section of our lesson. God shared his plan of cleansing the sanctuary. The sanctuary pointed to Jesus' sacrifice, which will take away the sins of the world. God warned that the enemy will come with a counterfeit plan for salvation. No human being can deliver us from sin or a guilty conscience. Jesus alone can save us from our sins and can offer forgiveness and peace. There are no shortcuts that can substitute for honest prayer to our heavenly father just sacrifice jesus sacrifice for cleansing our sins allows us direct access to the father through prayer god shared his prophecy to warn his people of what lies ahead and to warn of the deceptions and lies ahead yeah uh, thank you so much for that ariana uh, why don't we now read the story itself at least see this dream uh in color uh, Peter Lewis, maybe you can tell us about the story that uh, is there in the lesson. Okay, the story is about Daniel, and he, he had a dream. He had a dream, or uh, in the dream, he saw a goat which had horns between his eyes. From the horns grew from west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. The goat became very great, but at the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place, four prominent horns grew up towards the four wings of heaven. Out of one of, of them came out came another horn, which started small but grew in power to the south and to the no east and towards the beautif beautiful land. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it, it drew some of the straight hosts down to the earth and trembled on them. It set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord and his sanctuary was drawn down because of rebellion in the, in the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. It pr prospered in everything it did, and the truth was drawn to the ground. Then I heard, I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to him, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled, the vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion the, that causes desolation, the, su the surrender of the san sanctuary, and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. He said to me, it, it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the century will be reconciliated. And I heard a, a, man, a man's voice from the, from the UI calling, Gabriel, tell, tell this man the meaning of the vision. Gabriel said, the shaggy goat is the king of Greek and the large horn between its eyes is the first king. In the latter part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fencing look king, a master of intrigue, will arise. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause outstanding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, the people the holy people. He will cause this let to prosper, and he will consider himself su superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and, and take his stand against the prince of prince. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. I, Daniel, was worn out. I exalted for sev several days. Then I got up and went out the about the king business. I was appealed by the vision. It was obeyed beyond understanding. 
and that's the story. Yeah, Ariana. Out of the story, the enemy often uses counterfeits to distract us from God's plan for our life. What kind of counterfeits have you encountered? How did you recognize them to the counterfeits and how did you resist them? Maybe one of our panelists can help us answer. I don't know what I'd say about counterfeits or no counterfeits. I kind of think that without knowing the truth, you wouldn't be able to tell whether something is counterfeit or not. For example, money. You would like to know the features of the genuine note so that when you see a fake note, you would know. So in terms of temptation and in terms of things that are, you know, um, counterfeit of God's word or 99% truth and 1% of lie, it would be very difficult for you to tell if you do not spend time in God's word and study his truth. Yes, that's very right, precisely. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's speaking, really, to what we are seeing in, in the lesson today. Uh, the story, essentially, that was told by Peter Lewis is a vision that Daniel had. And in the story, it's a sort of some amalgamated text. Huh? But in summary, uh, Daniel sees uh, visions predicting the future. Particularly in the story, there are three visions that have been highlighted. Number one, it's the video, sorry, the story, or rather the vision, in regard to the, to the goat. Eh? And it's a goat that moves swiftly through and conquers. Eh? And the goat has a prominent horn. And that, we are told, is the story of Alexander the Great, um, who indeed conquered the world within three years, swift, eh? and then later on was defeated. Secondly, we are told of the story of the great dragon huh? and, and how the dragon grew one horn and how his tail swept a third of the stars. And lastly, we are told of the story about the 2,300 days when uh, Daniel asks the, 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 the watcher, huh? he asks, how long? How long until that sanctuary is cleansed? And he's told 2,300 days. And essentially, these stories are supposed to remind us that God is in control. You see, God was giving Daniel these visions in order to predict the future, in order for him to show Daniel that he knows precisely what's happening. Remember, Daniel here is in captivity. Daniel here has been taken away from his home. Daniel here is in a strange land. He doesn't know what's going on. He has no system of government, no system of, to be confident in. But God is trying to tell him that uh, he is in control. And not only uh, while they are in Babylon, but even when uh, for eternity, right? And uh, in that regard, I'd just like Omweri here to read for us the key text uh, particularly. And just, you know, sort of rewrite it in your own words in terms of what faith, what, what, what does this show about Daniel's faith? What does the key text tell us about Daniel's faith? Yeah. So the key text is, Lord, listen, Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Yeah. What does that tell you? What, 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 what is Daniel hoping in? You know, hmm. I, think, I think of the prayer, and I think Daniel chapter 9 consists of a prayer where Daniel is talking to God, and the key text says, Lord, listen, Lord, forgive, Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people and your people bear your name. So even even though he's in distress, he it is all for his glory. Like these things have happened, but everything put together, glory needs to go to God. And the Digino you know, section says that yeah. the 2,300 day prophecy is the longest time prophecy in the Bible. Mm -hmm. One day in prophecy is equals to a year. So this prophecy is actually 2,300 years long. And Daniel 9.25 tells us this prophecy would begin when the decree went out to rebuild Jerusalem. This happens when Artaxas' decree is given in 457 BC. And, you know, it's just fascinating how that when the predicted time came for its fulfillment, it just happened as he said. So even as much as Daniel says in the last part of Into the Story, I was worn out, I lay exhausted for several days. Then I got up, went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond understanding. He was looking into the future and just thinking that, you know, 
God has said so much, he has done so much, and now he even gives us a vision into the future. And even though he did not fully understand where God was going with all of this, he was just, you know, he was just shocked and, 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 and excited, and he was amazed by God's ability to do such things. And so he got up and went about his business and he, yeah. it was beyond his understanding. But you, you, you note that in the last lesson, he was troubled. Yeah. But in this lesson, he is not. He's not. He's not. I think he has, yeah. he has learned how to rely on God. Yeah. But a good point that you've just said there is that you can imagine, you know, God knows what's going to happen 2,300 years Later. from today. Yeah. Can you imagine? You know, usually we are troubled by what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen next year? Will I be a going concern? You know, will I still have money in my pocket? You know, next month, will I be able to pay the rent? God knows what's going to happen 2,300 years from today. Can you imagine? That should, that should shock us. And Daniel even is trying to comprehend what these visions mean. He's trying to extrapolate his, his mind to 2,300 days in the future, and he's just exhausted. You know, he's, he's tired. He can't do it. His mental capacity cannot fathom that, yeah. you know. And that's how we are, you know. A lot of the times whenever we worry, whenever we have anxiety, whenever things are not going our way, we worry, you know. And you find that we even sometimes get depressed, you know, that we cannot get out of bed, you know. We are so worried about what's going to happen. But the aim of the lesson is to teach us that God is in, in control. control. And it's but rest, by the way, uh, Ashley, as I come to you, if you can just read for us the flashlight and just see, you know, that that's precisely what the lesson is trying to tell us. Just before I read the flashlights, mm -hmm. I'll read the further insight, and it says that yeah, our lives may seem a tangle, but as we commit ourselves to the wise master worker, he will bring out the pattern of life and character that will be to his own glory, and that character which expresses the glory, the character of Christ, will be received into the paradise of God. So even as we, you know, face life's um, uncertainties, we know that we can commit ourselves to the master, and even though it seems uncertain in, in our eyes, the overall um, the overall situation or the overall goal is that it brings glory to God. So yeah. the flashlight says that through another vision, Father Light was soon upon the events of the future. And it was at the close of this vision that Daniel had one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision? And the answer was given, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed filled him with perplexity. So as much as, yes, he is um, appalled by the vision, it still fills him with perplexity. I mean, 2,300 years, what will happen? And what does the cleansing of the sanctuary for us in our day, which, you know, is 2,300 days from his day, would, would mean for him and for us? And what does he need to do at that time, at that point in his life, to be ready for this day, when he will not even exist. Yeah, so I'd say that, you know, sometimes God's solution to the problem is not what we can see. And God, he's defiling the sanctuary and trying to take away the sacrifices. God would cleanse the sanctuary and reconsecrate it. God would bring restoration. God would do through this judgment. And I'd like to ask this question to all of us, that what things come to our mind when you think about judgment? And, and, you know, it's just something to think about. Are you living in the fear of judgment or are you looking forward to it because you know that um, God, God will favor the servants of the Most High? And so sometimes even though we have to fight hard, when judgment comes, we need to know that because we are on God's side and if we keep on God's side, we'll be vindicated and declared winners. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Eh? I like the question that you asked about judgment. And, you know, it reminds me of what Omweri said at the very beginning of the lesson. You know, and maybe we can pause it here. How would you feel going to a case if you had, you know, the best advocate on your side? You know, as opposed to the worst. You know, they, there was a meme that uh, said, you know, when you see your advocate wearing a certain type of suit, you know, <laughs> and you're there before the judge. You know, how would you feel? How would you feel? Uh, knowing Jesus is your advocate, you know, do you feel more confident? How would you feel? Maybe we can ask Peter Lewis and Ariana to tell us. Uh, how would you feel? Uh, do you feel confident knowing that you have a good advocate uh, before that judgment? For me, I feel like if Jesus was my advocate, I'd be so assured that 
I am okay because we know that Jesus is loving and caring and he would help us like through any let's say for example if it's a case and I had Jesus as my advocate right now I wouldn't fear I wouldn't be scared because I know that I'm okay you'll yes, win I will win yeah yes so for me I don't think I'll have any fear or any doubt yeah no very true very true and that's how we generally feel um when Jesus is on our side right and even when uh, we are approaching the judgment or when we are reading some of these prophecies for example the 2300 days prophecy we ought to see it in a positive light knowing that Jesus is our advocate Jesus is on our side and that we are soon going to go home and that's really what's highlighted in the punchlines in the punchlines uh, Ariana perhaps maybe you can uh, read one and then allocate uh, other people to read the rest uh, in the punchlines go right ahead Okay, so the pant lines, I'm going to start with the first one. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, and it says, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. So here it's talking about judgment and how it's going to be and the last part says that everyone whose name is written in the book will be delivered. So everyone who's in the book is assured that they are secure, they are delivered. Yes, so maybe Ashley could read the next one for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the next two really um, came out for me in this lesson. The first one is Numbers 20. 19 which says God is not human that he should lie not a human being that he should change his mind does he speak and then not act does he promise and not fulfill and the next um, punchline is an answer to this question which is Joshua 21 45 which says not all not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed everyone was fulfilled so I think that you know God is giving us promises and it says that there are more than 365 promises in the bible that means it's a promise for each and every day of our lives and joshua says that not one of the lord's good promises to israel failed and everyone was fulfilled his promises are yeah and amen and we can actually believe that if he says i will not forsake you he will not forsake you if he says i will be with you from now till the end of the age he will be with you from now till the end of the age amen kitu shuabet Maybe you can read the next one. Uh, the next one is John 16:33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, God is in control and he's told us these things so that we may have peace, you know, so that we may not fret, so that we may not worry, so that we may not have anxiety. Eh? We know precisely, eh? effectively that he's in control Amen. Uh, Peter Lewis maybe you could read the last one for us for in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling he will hide me in in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock Amen Amen there's a wonderful song uh, called he will hide me he will hide me and he'll hide me in that in that shelter of that rock eh? and he said in the day of trouble in that day when trouble shall arise, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. And so the, the promises are writ large in Scripture. They are there throughout Scripture. God is promising that he's in control and that he's with us and that we need not fear anything at all. All right. Uh, we want to move on to the Thursday part. Uh, yeah. I'll just ask Ashley, perhaps maybe you could read for us uh, the, the book of Psalms 119, verse 105, and then... Yeah, Psalms uh, 119, 105 yeah. is a common text. The word uh -huh. is a lamp unto my feet and a light Amen. unto my path. And one of the strongest themes of Daniel is that God is in control no matter how bad things get, no matter how dark the storm is. God's promises to guide us, God promises to guide us through it. God not only predicted that dark times, but he promised deliverance. His word is sure, just as we can depend on his prophecies, we must lean on his promises. And when time gets dark, times get dark, we must hold on to the light of God's word and 
I challenge you today that choose a promise or two that reminds you of God's power and his plan to get you through the tough times. Commit it to memory, then write it on an index card and put it in a place that you will see every day. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. That's, uh, that's an activity that any of us can do, that each of us should do, in fact, uh, just to remind us of God's promises, to remind us of those assurances, that even when it's tough, even when the world is against you, God is with you. Yes. All right. I'd also like, uh, Omeri, perhaps maybe you can read for us Matthew chapter 10 um, and verse 30. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 30. Uh, it's also a very good verse. Uh, just uh, reciting once again God's promises. Matthew 10, 30. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Mm -hmm. uh, continue. Yes, continue, continue. Fear not, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Yeah, yeah. And it's really a call, a call for us, a call to action, you know. Now that you've heard that God is in control, now that you've heard that, you know, God knows the beginning from the end, now that you know that nothing surprises God, huh? then, you know, what are you to do, right? And I think the verse says it uh, subliminally. It says, you know, do not deny God, ideally. Yeah? Um, accept him as it were. Huh? Uh, in the lesson it says, you know, nothing uh, big or small catches God by surprise. He knows all and has a plan to make it work out in the end. What situations, you know, and, 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 and the lesson now tries to, tries to uh, involve us to, to tell us what situations have we felt that we are tempted in? Huh? What situations have we felt that, you know, we do not have the strength uh, to go on, right? And the lesson challenges us to look for a verse uh, that, that, you know, shows that God has the solutions uh, to our problems and that, you know, God is in control, right? And Yeah, I yeah, can see that a story is told of a lady who um, fears planes, yeah? And she's called Becky and she, could, she went to a plane for her first flight, but she didn't want anyone to know that she was terrified. So she grabs her safety belt and she reads the safety card with attention. She locates the nearest exit and she th starts to think of scenarios. If yeah. this happened, I'd do this or do that. And, you know, she listened intently to the speech given by flight attendants and tried to commit it to memory, all the safety pro procedures just in case of emergency. And as she... As she, as she goes through the flight, she is getting more comfortable. But her, her comfortability is disturbed by a bell that sounded overhead. And she says that there's a storm ahead. For the next 20 minutes, it would be a bumpy ride. Those around Becky looked at her to see how she would react. And she assured them that she was calm. She was reassured by the fact that the pilot was able to see the storm before he got it. And since it did not catch him by surprise, she was able, he was able to plan and to prepare for it. So Becky says that since it didn't catch him off guard, I'll not let it catch me off guard either. And this is just um, an illustration of how God, God has come through for us, the things he has told us. He has told us that, you know, the dark times are ahead and this will happen and that will happen. He has told you so that you prepare for it so that when the time comes, like Christ told his disciples, I will die in three days and rise up. But they did not understand. So when this tragedy came to pass, they were, you know, indisposed and thrown apart. So even as we live our lives, we should know that the things that will happen in the world will directly affect us. So we need to prepare for them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we do need to prepare for them. And God is there uh, with us uh, constantly. All right. So I think we've come to the end of our lesson. Uh, perhaps I could just give each of the panelists just a moment uh, to give a closing parting shot as we conclude. We'll start at my extreme left over there uh, with Ariana. Ariana, tell us, what have you learned from this lesson and what do you want the viewer to take away? Okay, so what I've learned from this lesson is from one of the punchlines that the verse that I will, that was saying that it was saying take heart 
I will overcome the world. So that applies to me that I should take heart and let God take control of my life only if I give it to him, only if I accept that I want God to be a part of my life is when I can know that I am secure. And what I want you viewers to take home is that you should not worry about anything. Nothing is too big or too small for God to handle. Amen, amen. Take heart, take heart, for God has already overcome the world. All right. Peter Lewis? Okay. What I've taken from the lesson is from the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 5, which says that for in the time of trouble, he will keep me safe in in his dwelling, he will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon the rock. So whenever you are feeling like you are down and you don't have any other option, just know that God is always there and he will protect you and he will restore what, whatever you have lost or he will restore your happiness. So, yeah. Amen, amen. In the time of trouble, huh? in the time of danger, uh, in the time of, of extreme pressure, he will keep you. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I agree with Ariana about taking heart when you know, times are tough. And we're reminded in Joshua 21 about, you know, not, not even one of God's promises to Israel was fa failed. So we can take out that all the promises in the Bible that are about us, you know, we know they're going to come true. It's just a fact. So we just, you know, you, should not really, you shouldn't be scared by things because you know that, you know, there's a, there's a place you're going in the end. Also, I want to add from the Father Insight, it says, as we commit ourselves to the wise master. So as we commit, you know, that's like continuance 10. So it's not something you just do once. You're going to commit more and more part of your life to him. He will bring out the pattern of life and character that will be to his own glory. So you just, you know, submit more and more parts of, of your life to God and it will all be to his own glory. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. As we commit more, as we commit continually, then the glory of God shall shine within us. You know, that, that, that's an actual promise by God, that the more that we commit to him, the more that we become like him, right? And it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Uh, Ashley? A parting shot will be from Steps to Christ, page 100. And it says that take to him everything that perplexes the mind. Nothing is too great for him to bear. For he holds up the world. He rules over the affairs of the universes. Nothing that in a way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. So take your cares to God, trusting that, you know, he will be there. He will help you when you need him. And he will never disappoint you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's such a wonderful way to end. You know, um, every prophecy that has been granted, every prophecy that has been given is for our benefit. It is for us to know that God is actually thinking about us and that he has a plan and that he has not left us to wander alone. Uh, that we are safe in his hands and that he is in control of everything that goes on. Anyway. Thank you so much for being with us during this short time. I know that we could have explored much more, but uh, alas, uh, we have to stop here. Thank you so much and have a lovely Sabbath. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you. Um, at this time, we'd like to thank you so much, O oh Father, for the opportunity to read your word. Thank you so much, O oh Father, for the assurance that you are in control. Thank you so much, O oh Father, for the assurance that we need not worry that you know everything, O oh Father, not only about us, but about our world and about our future. Now, Father, I ask that you may be with us, keep us and protect us. Save us ultimately for your kingdom when you come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.